welcome to Inside Scoop. I'm Sumi Das. Joining me is senior writer for CNET News, Seth Rosenblatt. Seth, thanks for being with us. Hi, Sumi. Okay, so it wasn't that long ago that we were talking about our first test drives in mm -hmm. the Google self-driving cars. Yep. Those were Lexuses. Yes. Now it seems that Google has doubled down on the self-driving car technology. They've created their own car mm -hmm. from scratch. They've built it from the ground up. Yes. Tell us about it. Well, they didn't just double down. They shrunk it by at least half. It's tiny. Tiny, it's tiny little thing. It looks a little bit like a uh, like one of the new Fiats, but without the nose. It doesn't yeah. have a gas engine, uh, no internal combustion engine. It's got uh, a motor driven by an electric battery, and actually it has two motors. One is a backup in case the first one fails. And the thing that everybody keeps talking about is the fact that there's no steering wheel. Yes, no steering wheel, no gas pedal, no brakes. You sit in, you push a button, and you pray. <laughs> Although you, you and I felt pretty comfortable. In it, these was, it, was, cars. it was amazingly safe. Okay. So the cars that we were in were these, uh, these Lexus SUVs that had Basically been... Basically been hacked, right? They'd been totally hacked. They'd been adapted with Google's self-driving technology. Um, but they were standard Lexuses. They could go as fast as the Lexus SUV can normally go with a human driver. These cars are something special. They are limited to 25 miles per hour. And because of the way the technology works, it needs that, that spire on top of the roof to okay. see the world around it. Um, uh, the cars don't have uh, as many restrictions in terms of what it can see. The Lexus roof was quite large, and it created some blind spots for the car. Uh, Google says that these cars that they've designed don't have that issue. Any other capabilities that these cars that they've built mm. um, have that the that maybe were limiting factors in the Lexuses and Toyotas that they hacked? Sure. So one of the things that they've done with these cars is uh, again change their change them so they can only go uh, 25 miles per hour. Uh, they have they're rated for crashes in the front at 25 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour, and back to account for whiplash. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're really just uh, the kind of thing, they're, they're almost like golf carts, you know? Yeah, they reminded me of the gem, you know, those electric yeah. cars, the gems. Yeah. Um, I also read that they have sensors that can see basically the distance of two football fields in any direction. Yes. Yes. Is that something that the Lexuses and Toyotas have? I think that's new. I think uh, the sensors that, new. yeah, the sensors they were able to put on the Lexuses and Toyotas were not quite as developed as the ones that are involved in this car. Google had gotten quite far with this technology using mm -hmm. um, Lexus and Toyota cars. Mm -hmm. um, why did they decide to do this? I mean, it's a big effort to build a car from scratch. It's a huge effort. Uh, and they told us that each one of these cars costs around $150,000, which, you know, for you and I is a lot of money, but for Google it's what they find in their couch when they're, exactly. uh, uh, you know, after, after watching the game. Right. So uh, why did Google invest in these custom and somewhat expensive cars? And I think the answer is that they feel that self-driving technology isn't just about the car being able to go where it needs to go without uh, a human steering it. It's also about changing what the car can be. Mm -hmm. The statistics are on Google's side here. Between uh, the ages of 4 and 34, uh, the uh, number one cause of death in the United States it, are car crashes. 40% right. um, of those are, are bicyclists and mm -hmm. pedestrians, which is horrific. Google has something to, the, to their argument where they say that you know, people who uh, are too old to drive safely, people who uh, have infirmities and can't drive safely, can't, uh, you know, if they're blind or they have other vision impairments, um, or they're on medication that makes it very dangerous to, mm -hmm. to operate a, a vehicle. This could be a huge, huge thing for them. This could totally change their lives and their mobility. Absolutely. Um, another thing is a lot of people getting to their public transportation can be a huge deal because it's that first and last mile. And something like this could solve that. Mm -hmm. uh, Google has talked about you know, fleets of self-driving cars and, and people being able to get around. It's not necessarily something that you must have to get around, but I think it can solve a lot of, uh, of mobility problems for people. And that's what makes this so exciting. Right. Uh, at the very least, yet another indication that it's not if self-driving cars become a reality, it's, it's more when. Absolutely. Okay. Seth Rosenblatt, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Sumi. For Inside Scoop, I'm Sumi Das. Thanks for watching.